We're finally going to find out, once and for all, <laughs> who is the strongest. From Lattice, I'm sure you've you've seen his face. You know who he is. So, what are we doing in our first session this morning? So, session number one, which is down here, you can see behind us, is going to be looking at like full body strength and power. So, I'll be using like force plates on like pull down machines, pull up machines, uh, jump mats, and it's all to see how strong are you, how dynamic are you, yeah. and get really detailed feedback yeah. uh, to see how does that relate to your climbing. Are you really strong compared to your grade? Yeah. Are you weak compared to your grade? Yeah. Uh, are you strong compared to each other? Are yeah. you stronger? Um, but it's really hard, maximum testing, so it's quite fun to watch. Yeah, cool, I'm psyched. Let's do it. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> those, those legendarily strong legs. This is all like new territory. You know? Leg strength done. Yeah, just some jumping. This is some, jump in. some pads. They didn't give anything away, but I know we did badly. Okay. Yeah, cool. So on to the next one. Um, kind of testing isometric strength across the shoulder girdle. Um, so we've not really looked at this before, and this is kind of our yeah, first time yeah, collecting some data for it. Um, and you're just going to be um, kind of static, static kind of um, pull and see how much force you can exert. What's the deal then? You have to do the impossible pull up. Is I've got to do the on? impossible pull up. I've got to pull up the impossible. It just bang away for it. Oh, static. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, yeah, you got it off the ground. Joe <laughs> 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 has just managed to pull so hard they had to add more weight to the test. And now you're about to watch me play it. <laughs> Oh my abs! You must have stayed much longer. That was good. Long yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can have one more go. What? Because Ollie will um, pull you down when your uh, graph goes from like your peak yeah. and then you'll slowly dip off. Yeah. So if you don't want to spend 10 seconds at max, what you feel is max, you yeah. just pull so hard that you really do actually access your two max at the top. And after okay. two or three seconds, it will drop off a little bit. And Ollie will say, you can stop. Yeah. Whereas I reckon you're pacing yourself very slightly. <laughs> I think I struggle. Not, I'm not at 90% effort. It's, it's that last few percentage points which actually ends up being a really high performance determinant because it's so hard and kind of like uncomfortable for people to access the last bit. Yeah. And if you can do that week after week after week, whether it's training or projecting, yeah. it's what tends to make you better. Yeah, I mean, you're going to push that top. I suppose if you can try 90% all the time, that's going to become your 80%, right? Yeah. And it's hard to access it. It's hard to describe it. Okay, stop. Yeah, you did. Good. Don't make me yeah, do that no. again, please. So Joe managed to pull so hard on that one they had to add more weight. <laughs> and I apparently can keep my maximum effort up for a long, long, long time. time. Tom can keep it up for a long time. <laughs> Whereas Joe goes lesson. hard. <laughs> I go ham and hurt my abs. Yeah. So <laughs> your choice. <laughs> Yeah, that'll do it, that'll do it. Two out of four, I reckon. Yeah. Two again, I would say. That. Yeah. Four lot. Okay. Go, 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 so, 90 kilos. 90 kilos? 90 kilos, yeah. Good, well, we knew you were going to smash that one, so. 
Yeah, you peaked about halfway through. Our slap basically is, you're going to hang off the run, completely static, and then you're going to pull up as high as you can, and slap as high as you can. Simple as that. Sweet. You got any injuries? Your arm is about four foot longer than mine. See? See? One way. Woo! Yeah, man, that was good score. Well done. Sick, Tom. So you got the stronger right, right arm. I've got the stronger well, no. left arm. You're more of an all-round on both of them. Yeah. You, got, you got both both very high. I think yours is the most even on the biggest score as well. Whereas Joe's is like, this right uneven. hand was big, <laughs> left arm was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do you think you're even going to be able to get into the position? No. To, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got hip immobility. Down, down, down. down. Three, two, one. Relax. Okay. So we've been running around, chirps and about way too much, like as usual. So we're running behind. So we're now got, we're up in this area, which I think is looking at things like finger strength. I'm um, also measuring like height, body fat, mass. Body fat All percentage. The words, I don't know. Forearm density. Yeah, forearm henchness. So yeah, yeah. we're sight. Yeah, I'm super But psyched. we're going to have to blast through yeah, them. Run so around, so you might miss some of it. Volume of the forearm. How big and is your forearm? How big is your forearm? Good so you've got one... Nine three. Or one seven six. No wonder you're better than me. <laughs> Yeah, you might not be as short as you think you are. <laughs> Great, nice okay. one, cheers, Jake. 60.1. 6 6.1 kg. Yeah. Sweet. Wait, what was my span compared to my height? Uh, your span compared to uh, 176, so I think you're about the same. Even Steven. I say, <laughs> it's good to have it confirmed. Yeah. I've got really long arms. Yeah, you bastard. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to lie here. And you just yeah, I'm, grab I'm, on whatever you need. I'm expecting you to at least get the lowest score in this one. Joe, so you're going to get a lot of foot fetish people messing, you know? So Eight points. Yeah, healthy range is 12. So the machine says. So, so the machine says I'm a health <gasps> <laughs> Brutal! <laughs> At least I haven't got really hairy hobbit feet. <laughs> how long he is. <laughs> Just keeps going. It's fine to work out how much how much my paunch adds. How much the paunch is, paunch is really worth. Yeah. Tom's on what? 8.6%. And I'm on? 8.5%. Well, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing you've heard all day. Yeah. So I'm nearly as, as underweight as the skinniest man on earth. Yeah? You dread in this? Yeah. I think it'll be great. Are you going to turn into a raspberry? Yeah. It's going to be horrible. A sweating raspberry. Like the ones that you find at the bottom of the box oh. in the fridge for a few days. <laughs> the one that just gets thrown in the bin. That's going to be me. Two tests. The first one is going to be your maximum voluntary contraction. So essentially your max strength. But we're also going to look at the rate of force development from that position, okay? So the first test, MVC, we're going to do three repetitions on each hand. First right, then left, and we'll go through three times, okay? Uh, same thing with a three second hang, uh, we only need a short amount of time to see how far or how high you can get your force, okay? So yeah, it's going to be pumpy, but one thing we want to cut out, another variable, is shaking. So you're not allowed to shake. So you're going to get really pumped, you can bring your hand down to your side, but no shaking out. So I'll catch you out if you're shaking, okay? Uh, seven seconds on, three seconds off. Seven seconds is going to feel like a long time, especially when you're tired. But you need to, sorry? 24 repetitions. 24 repetitions. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, it's going to feel like a long time, but you need to try maximally for the whole seven seconds, okay? So it's voluntary contraction. You need to be putting in max effort through the whole test. So try hard faces, grunting if you want, whatever, yeah? Pulling really hard, and we'll encourage you to do that through the whole test. Okay, is everyone good? Yeah. 
Broken. We broke him. I feel like I don't even have an arm anymore. Nice. I just can't keep that index. My yeah, index this one was going, that one was going. It's getting worse though, I'll tell you that. What yeah, is the pain yeah, in the forearm? Yeah, it's just in. building. Oh. This is the lactic acid just like. I don't think I'm, <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to be able to climb again. We've, we've rested. We've re yeah, we've, we've semi recovered from that pump fest. I've never felt pump, I've never felt pump like that yeah. in my life. It was just like someone pouring hot tar on the inside of your forearm. <laughs> yeah. um, and it just kept filling up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, yeah, there was no stopping it. I was no. like, when is this going to end? Like, it I can't, ramped. I can't pull, I can't pull anymore, but you have to, yeah. I still had to do like five hangs after I felt like I couldn't even pull. Yeah. Right, so we have just finished all of the assessments, yeah. I think. We didn't, there was one we didn't get around to, but we got everything else in. Yeah. Super interesting, like loads like loads more fun than I was expecting. Yeah. Okay, but now yeah. we are gonna hopefully cut to being up at their secret laboratory mm, in the lab. In the lab, um, and we're gonna be able to compare our results yeah. and go through them with the guys. We're here. Yeah. Two months later. We are. <laughs> we're here. We're here to finish the. Lattice Symposium video. Lattice Symposium video. So you've just probably seen us absolutely wrecking ourselves on a bunch of different tests. Um, so me and Joe have been kind of sent our results via PDF and we've kind of gone through them, but we thought it'd be interesting to go through them with Tom, obviously, and just kind of see who's strongest and see what we're shit at, basically. That's, so. a, that's a very positive way <laughs> to put it. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'd say for... for you know, you guys out there watching, the, I think the, the main key point to get across in terms of any profiling tool is that this is like a, a signposting system. So any good performance assessment, whether it's looking at strength, fitness, flexibility, power, any of these things, is that they signpost you in a certain direction, whether you're working with a coach or with, your, with yourself, into where you would put your training efforts so we might find for Joe that he's excessively strong in his fingers, for example. So that's a really strong signpost that would say to him, don't spend the next 12 months focusing on your finger strength, 
just because he happens to climb with someone who has even stronger fingers. This is sometimes the kind of the position you can yeah. lead yourself in because you your mate just happens to have the world's strongest fingers, yeah, yeah, for yeah, example. Yeah. Uh, or likewise for Tom, we might find that he has amazing strength but absolutely no power. And so with his training, he might want to push it more in that direction. Um, so it's just a really effective signposting method. It's not a, a solution to everything. It's not the only coaching tool. Uh, first of all, I'm going to ask you, uh, how did you enjoy the day? Was it was it? it was great. It was really good. Yeah. I mean, um, it was just fascinating to to do something which was measuring strength because I don't think either of us had measured our own strength no. before. Um, and I mean the uh, the one arm pull downs repeaters was agony. Yeah, that was absolutely <laughs> agony. Hard, I, I, I actually was pumped for about three days afterwards. We had a climbing session afterwards and I I think did two climbs and then I pulled on a V6 and I was like, I actually can't, I still can't close this hand. Yeah. But um, it came back. But the day was great. I think we were absolutely buzzing after the yeah, day. It was so really, much really fun. Like, and you've climbed a lot together. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. kind of climb and, well, climb and train when we can together as much yeah. as we can, so. Yeah, so yeah. it's good to, it's interesting to see, to compare our, I think we're both I'll, really I'll perceived, I'll yeah. perceive, because in, in my mind, Joe is a lot stronger on pretty much everything apart from maybe finger strength. Yeah. And I think I have stronger finger strength, but probably I'm weaker in every every other aspect. Yeah. Ah, okay. That's the current, that's the current hypothesis. Yeah. Right, okay. But I don't know, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But yeah, it was kind of interesting doing the test and it was, I don't know, it's just a really good vibe, just everybody encouraging each other and yeah, so much fun. Right, should we have a... Look yeah, at it. Let's yeah, dive yeah. into the results. So, yeah. what, what, we, what have we got first? So, we have got first uh, the lap pull down uh, test, which was a single arm and a two arm. And this, this is a, um, a maximal test to have a look at the strength that uh, Joe and Tom had in their shoulders and arms. And it's, it's equivalent essentially to doing a one arm pull up or a two arm pull up, uh, heavily weighted, except this was an isometric pull, so the yeah. arm didn't move anywhere. Yeah and you try to exert as, as much as possible. possible. Yeah. Uh, I did note when I was walking around the day, watching you guys do it, and uh, I could see some heavy... Some heavy, heavy grunting. Yeah. Uh, so uh, for Joe, um, you pulled a total max force of 157 uh, kilograms, uh, which is 262% of your body mass. Yeah. This, in <laughs> the simplest possible terms, is really freaking strong. Yeah. As in, really strong. Uh, we very, very rarely see scores of above 200%. Uh, so even if you're down at 200%, I'd be saying, you can really pull a lot. Yeah, and yeah. I don't think you have any issues with being able to develop the strength in your arms and shoulders back to be able to perform at a very high level for climbing. Okay. Um, and likewise, when we split that down into the single arm scores, is Joe was pulling 102 kilos for his left arm and 88 for his right, which effectively is the equivalent of a one arm pull up because yeah. it's well over your body weight. And again, a total non-limiting factor in your performance. And I think that's kind of, guess what you would consider a superpower <laughs> in, in what you have. Yeah. Okay. And I've looked at lots and lots of very good level climbers who yeah. score lower than that and they still have no issues with the ability of the amount of force that they can generate yeah. through their back and shoulders. Okay. I think the important thing here actually, so this is really interesting, is that when we find people who have really high strength scores, like absolute strength, that they can apply statically, is that now is the time to work on that explosively and okay. really generate a high explosive force there. So that's lots, lots of distance covered, fast with the body weight that you have. So I think that would now be where your real training potential lies. Okay. Um, and we can talk about that in a power slap in a bit. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Tom, let's have a look at the results in this. Uh, so Tom, lap pull down, you were at 100, well, essentially 150 kilos. And that came out at 216% body yeah. mass. Again, not bad. That's yeah. pretty good, right? That's a bit better than not bad. Okay, cool. sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be happy with that score. Yeah. I'd be very, <laughs> very, very happy with that score. Um, and then for the left arm and right arm, so single arm, you came yeah. in at 75 and 77. So that's that's more than my body weight, which yeah. is interesting because I can't do a one arm pull up. 
Yeah, I see. don't even feel like I'm close to being able to do one particularly. So. Ah, so what's going to be interesting about this is that if you look at any kind of testing which you have an isometric testing and you're fixing the angle of activation, yeah. then you're only looking at the strength at, at that, at point. that particular yeah. angle. So there's some, essentially like there's biomechanical issues involved with this. So yeah. you have the ability to be able to exert a lot of force in a certain part of the range. Yeah. But what would be really interesting now is to be able to take Tom and test him at almost full extension of the arm yeah. down to almost complete lock yeah. and start to build a, a profile or a spectrum of, of, of where, the amount of, my, of force. Where my weak yeah. points are. Yeah. 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 And yeah. a good climber or a good coach will always say, okay, that's really interesting. Now, where does that lead us? Yeah. What should we now explore? So yeah. Yeah. do something with it, yeah. not just, oh, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then not look yeah. at it. Uh, Joe, finger strength. So we were testing this on the digital fingerboard yeah. and um, the way in which you do that is you keep your feet on the floor so you have to be able to exert that force through the forearm and the shoulder at the same time. There will always be differences between doing a finger strength test with a sort of weighted system and a pulley versus keeping your, your feet on the floor. Yeah. So there's always going to be some differences but it'll still be a useful way of assessing that finger yeah. strength. And uh, for you, you came in at almost identical on both arms, so 60.7 kilograms on left and 61 kilograms on right. Yeah. And that's very, very close to your body weight. So yeah. you're, because you came in at 101% yeah. of body mass, you yeah, must be around 60 kilos. I'm 60, yeah, 60 kilos. Yeah, 60 kilos. So, yeah. so you're essentially pulling body weight um, on that one arm hang. Yeah. Um, and from the data that I've seen from collecting results from digital force plates like we had at the symposium yeah. versus you know a pulley setup that we might have over there, then people tend to score lower on the digital okay. um, system. And uh, so if you do that same test with a pulley system, I suspect you would pull a little bit higher than that. Okay. Which uh, says to me, if you look at, you compare your climbing grade and the finger strength level that you yeah. have, Again, it's just another really strong point within okay. your profile. Um, it would be great if we continue to slowly move that up yeah. and progress it because I think there's such a strong correlation with finger strength and climbing performance. It always makes sense to yeah. keep working on that thing. But I would not, if I was your coach, be saying, right, abandon everything else, yeah. let's just do finger strength because yeah. okay. that's such a big limiting element to your performance. Yeah. That's yeah. not the case. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it's a it's a strong yeah. point. Yeah, because that's because that's interesting. Because um, at the moment with my training, that finger strength is quite a lot of what I'll do. Um, I think mainly from like time perspective as well. I can get a fingerboard session quite quickly mm. in a day, whereas like, other training sessions seem to take maybe more time. Yeah. Or maybe that's my ability to train yeah. other things. Yeah. Uh, so Tom, you came out with seventy six kilograms on the left and 72 on the right. Yeah. Uh, one thing to uh, just uh, point out quickly there is that there's an immediate difference between left and right. Yeah. And I think it's important to understand that the imbalance of the asymmetry between those scores is not necessarily something to panic about immediately yeah. and it isn't necessarily a problem right now. It's very, very normal to see all the way through the spectrum of grades from relatively intermediate climbers all the way up to professional athletes that there is that difference that asymmetry between yeah. left and right and that isn't an indicator of a problem yeah. yeah but it could be an indicator that someone might be more susceptible to injury they might be holding some kind of tightness in the shoulders forearms yeah. elbow okay. or that they have something that's slightly unusual going on with their training yeah uh, so it's just to be aware of yeah but that difference is you know it's under five percent and I wouldn't be having massive alarm bells over five yeah, percent. Yeah. I'd go. Can we have a look at a few more things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then in terms of absolute force or relative force compared to your body weight, then you're up at 109 percent of body mass. Yeah, really fucking good. Yeah, that's very very good levels of yeah. finger strength. Yeah, and uh, this is most certainly not a limiting factor within your climbing profile now. Yeah. Uh, all other things being level. Yeah. Uh, of course, if we get to the point where eventually you have 
really poor technique, you have really poor core strength, you have yeah. really flexibility, all of those can't be moved, eventually yeah. it could actually become a limiting factor because yeah. nothing else is improving. Yeah, yeah. So you now need 115% yeah. to, yeah, to yeah, climb yeah. the next grade. Yeah. But it's, it's really good. Joe, yeah. there we go. Joe's there. So the critical force testing is, this was, if you watched the video where Joe and Tom were suffering the yeah. most yeah. and they were on the digital force to play and they were doing this uh, repeater system where they were hanging for th seven seconds, resting for three seconds, hanging for seven seconds and they were doing a continual cycle of these hangs until they reached total and utter fatigue uh, during the window of, I think, was it four minutes you did in your testing or I six I can't minutes? remember, I feel like I blacked out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I genuinely had no idea what was going no, on. We, we just did what you said and that was it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it was definitely not, you know, it was not a minute. Um, no. no. Yeah, and I think it was it, could have been it, four, it reached know. a point where you were able to generate high levels of force initially, and then as you fatigue, and you tire through that test, then you start to plateau out and yeah. find a level. And the whole point of this testing is that we're trying to understand the relationship between maximal strength, and then the ability to be able to generate force anaerobically, and then aerobically. So if you look at your graph, what you see underneath the line, so the darker green, um, is that the dark green represents the, the aerobic work, so that lower end um, work that you can do for higher volumes, for yeah. longer duration. And then above the green line is that anaerobic work, so that higher intensity work, which has a, a limited window and is more yeah. uh, relevant to you know, crux sequences on roots, uh, short boulders, long yeah. boulders, and then obviously maximal force. And what we're looking at this is uh, the, the area of, uh, or the amount of work that's done in this anaerobic zone. And this is kind of like the area under the curve, which if you look at any scientific papers is called W prime. Okay. And if anyone's interested in getting right to the kind of geeky knowledge, they just have to look up critical force testing and uh, W prime yeah. values. Yeah. Um, but for us, what's kind of most relevant, um, I think is this, this line here between the green and, or the light green and the dark green, yeah. and the amount of force that you can generate at that level. And for Joe, you uh, came out at a value of 22.2 uh, kilograms. Okay. So that was how much force that you could generate when you were highly fatigued, yeah. which compared to the maximal force was up at 60, yeah, 60 kilograms. Yeah. So you're down you know, in the 30s in terms yeah. of a percentage. Um, uh, compared to your day state, your critical force was greater than the values that we've seen of other climbers at a similar ability. So that line is relatively high, or okay. is there a good level compared to other climbers? And, uh, so it's a kind of surprisingly yeah. okay value there. Yeah, I was quite, because I don't really climb on a rope ever, for not for reasons. Um, yeah. I was surprised to see that I was like scoring well in my ability to keep putting power down. Yeah, yeah. In contrast, if we go to Tom, yeah, so we, if we look at your uh, critical force, uh, then you come out the bottom of the curve, so the amount of force that you can generate, 22 yeah. kilograms, yeah. which is down at a, approximately 32% of your body weight. Yeah. Uh, whereas Joe scored up at 37, so yeah. you're scoring slightly lower in terms yeah. of the percentage of body weight. It's important that it's calculated in that way because it's a strength to weight ratio sport. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't make so much sense if we just went for absolutes. Yeah. And uh, with that, uh, it's uh, coming out with your critical force values being comparable. So rather than Joe's being a little bit stronger than we were expecting, compared to his peer group of climbing grade, yeah. yours is coming out as just level. Yeah, yeah. What's uh, good to know is that the way in which we weight your uh, peer group or how you compare in climbing grades, yeah. is that we take both your root grade and bouldering grade, yeah but we double weight to your preferred discipline. Okay, so yeah. we excessively weight yeah. your peer group comparison yeah. to the boulders, because yeah. yeah. that's your preferred discipline, yeah. but we're still taking in some kind of uh, effect from, yeah. the, from yeah. the root climbers. Yeah. The, some of the other results we saw from the day, so let's have a look at Joe. Oh, let's have a gear index. Ooh. Neutral. Neutral? Yeah. Ah. No special advantage there. No special advantage whatsoever. Body fat, 8.5%. Yeah. It's good for a well-trained athlete. Yeah. It's, I mean, you can't go off just one single metric on one single day. I don't yeah. think that's the right way to do things, but 
that's relatively low. Yeah. And I would say in my experience, you want to be careful with how much of your year you spend in the sub 10 category. Okay. Um, because if you're not fueling adequately, then your recovery and ability to be able to develop strength and make yeah. structural change to your body is going to be uh, affected. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just worth yeah. being aware that it's something to consider, but it's uh, it's just always something. It's, it's again a good metric to be yeah. aware of and see that you know you're not two percent, yeah. you're not twenty five percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, power slap. I think this is a really interesting test. And this is interesting because we're trying to see how much power you can generate from both of you having very, very high levels of strength. And whilst you did score pretty high on both of these, uh, for Joe, you were up at uh, 100, and, 100 centimetres and 111 centimetres, yep. so pretty high on the board. I think this is a relatively low value okay. compared to what the the overall force that you can generate in terms of strength, okay, um, from what we saw in the, the lap pull down, so single arm and two arm, yeah. yeah, and if I was to try and increase the climbing ability you have, I think you need to work more on power, okay, basic level of power. Um, yeah. I would love to see both arms because you had a slight difference of ten yeah. centimeters. Yeah. Both arms scoring well over one hundred and ten centimeters, okay, and I think that's appropriate for the level of strength that you have. That really has got to be high. Yeah. And you've got to capitalise on it. If you yeah. have something in your profile which is amazing and scores really highly, capitalise on it and push it to the yeah, yeah. to the nth yeah. degree. And building power on top of strength is an amazing thing to do. Yeah. Um, in contrast, if we look at Tom, uh, you scored very similarly on both arms, you're 107, 109 centimetres. Yeah. But again, I think you've got a lot more power. Yeah, and to I be think to generate. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think you have to take into account my um, my ape index into those into those results a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got. What, what's your ape index? It's outrageous. Is it plus oh, ten or something like that? No, it's not. It's not plus ten. I'm just quite tall already. So. Um. Uh, one oh one oh four. One oh four. Yeah. So it was plus seven. Yeah, that's um, pretty good. One hundred ninety three. I think. I think at the end of the day, you went through everybody's ape indexes, and I think you said someone something you're like, oh, Mr. Tickle in the room has one hundred ninety three, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's that's me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, I mean, use it. You've yeah, got yeah. It. yeah, yeah. Flexibility. Uh, we had a look at some. Oh yeah, I'm interested to see hip mobility scores and ankle flexibility as well. Yeah. So uh, we had ankle flexibility. Uh, so this was a test where we had our foot flat on the floor, and then you were leaning your knee forwards, yeah. and we were measuring the distance from the toe to the edge of the box and how far we could bring that foot back and yeah. still reach the, the knee hitting the wall yeah. or, or the backboard. Uh, you scored left and right 10, 11 centimetres. Yeah. For me. Uh, this is that's, that's uh, Joe, isn't Joe. it? Joe. Yeah. 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 Um, and your ankle flexibility was a lot worse compared to other climbers. I think this is actually very close to the kind of very, very yeah. bottom value yeah. that we had on the entire yeah. day. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, do you want to know what the implication is and where that's going to affect your climbing? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I get heel hooks and, and toe hooks, or is it ability to... Uh, so potentially smearing. heel hooks, if yeah. you are talking about the outside edging of the heel, so more like the... Yeah, that way. Yeah. Like the, the he, foot Joe one. is terrible at those kind of heel hooks. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely terrible. Another one? Uh, toe hooks. No? Uh, I think volumes, right? Yeah. Standing on volumes. Because yeah. okay, I, yeah. smear, smear I can't drop my heels enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you won't be able to drop your heels enough. And yeah. You can't get enough contact with the rubber on a really big flat volume. Yeah. How are you ever going to generate and use the force that you do have on your legs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's something that we really try and work on and become a, a, a stay aware of with competition climbers and indoor yeah. specialists is the ability to have lots of range of movement in the ankle. Yeah. Otherwise, you just can't stand low yeah. on some yeah. yeah. I don't think it affects uh, the very small little button footholds yeah. on a wall, yeah. but a big flat volume. Yeah. Yeah. And all climbing in font or something like that is kind of... Slab climbing. Yeah, you've yeah, got, yeah. got to drop those heels. Yeah, okay. yeah. you've got to have a range of movement. Tom, you came I out. Feel like I was a very slightly better, but still yeah, probably 12, not great. 14 percent. Uh, this is more in line of other climbers uh, on the day. Yeah. Uh, but I think this still has yeah, a lot of room for, for improvement. Yeah. There, for sure. It'd be nice to see that into consistently both sides mid 
mid to high teens. Okay. Um, so there's a bit of work to be done there. Yeah. A bit of flexibi sure. flexibility work. Yeah. Uh, and you can improve that with time. It's very workable. Yeah. It doesn't come very quickly. Yeah. No. But you work on it consistently and you'll see that change. Yeah. yeah. How about um, hip mobility? Because I think we were interested to see who's uh, got the more mobile hips. I think Tom. So Tom, you came out on hip slide was uh, 286. Uh, and Joe was 286. Nine. So quite similar, actually. Yeah. So very similar. Mm, yeah. Re yeah. Re well, reasonably right, similar. Yeah. Uh, so this was the test where you had to create a frog position, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and then you were sliding down the wall, and then you were looking at the distance between your hip and the yeah. wall. And this is important for us as climbers because we want to be able to get our hips as close as possible to the wall whilst we're in that frog position. Yeah. Because. Do you know why? You can get more weight down on your feet, right? Yeah, your hips yeah. Are nice and yeah exactly. Yeah. So centre of gravity lies close to the wall yeah. and we can weight that over right. our feet more. Yeah. It's great to do that in climbing because yeah. our lower limb is, or limbs are strong yeah. Yeah. Uh, and our sort of base is support, so it's great to do. And Joe, you were yeah totally. a little bit further out yeah. <laughs> compared to Tom yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you both were worse than the average. Your, yeah, yeah. your average and comparable uh, experience and grade climbers. Yeah. Yeah. And the important thing to take away from this is when you look at any inflexible climbers, it gets a lot with guys especially, yeah. is that if you can't put your body into a position which is advantageous to use the strength and the fitness that you've trained, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's kind of madness yeah. when you think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like having an amazing car with this um, like qu top quality engine and gearbox yeah. and plastic bag tires. <laughs> yeah, 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 and terrible, terrible steering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I, I mean... It's not very sexy to work on, though. No, I mean, it's been, I mean, well, we did the thing two months ago and I've started to try and stretch more. And it has, like, I've definitely felt like I'm getting more flexible, but I think it's one of those things where, because I haven't done it before, it's like starting new with something and when you're completely new to something, you're rubbish at something and you don't get that positive feedback loop if you're not very good at it, so it's really hard to... To get, but once you get into it, I suppose it's quite yeah. easy to keep going. I, have, I don't think I've done any flexibility or mobility work in maybe my 12 year climbing, climbing career. Oh, really? so, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, same again for the shoulder mobility um, is... I think we both scored two on shoulders. Yeah, so both of you were, so this is bringing your arms up above your yeah. head. Um, it's very, very normal for climbers to be have a, a lack of range of mobility compared yeah. to the general population. Yeah. But we have more muscles and we have shorter muscles, we have stronger muscles yeah. in this area of our body. So typically we are gonna score differently from the general population. Yeah. Um, but the useful thing to understand is either a difference between left and right on either side yeah. of the body. And Hi, Thank you. <laughs> doing well there, didn't we? Do you need me to sign anything? No, love, no. Okay. But hopefully you've found yeah, that not that too overly technical. No, that was, no. that was at the right level for my brain to cope with it. <laughs> so Tom, what? what What was your like biggest takeaway from your like results? From that? Yeah, what's like, what's your... The, I don't know what the biggest takeaway should be from that. I'm, I'm going back through it in my head. Power and execution. Power and execution, yeah. Probably working on that full range of, that full range of movement with my, with my arm strength, obviously, because mm -hmm. there's something going on there that I can pull more than my body weight, but I can't pull my body weight on one arm. Um, yeah, and then definitely flexibility and mobility is, is obviously very high up on our... Yeah, it's high on the list. Nice. Cool. Well, that was really good. Thank you so much for going through the results. That was awesome. that was super interesting. Yeah, yeah, really um, interesting. If you guys have any questions, sat behind the screen, uh, pop uh, them in the comments. Yeah, or pop them in the comments. Make sure you go to follow Lattice yeah. on Instagram. Uh, you also have a Facebook community page as well. Yes, I we believe. do. Yeah, yeah. So we have a Facebook community page, which uh, has been a really nice thing to see develop over the last couple of years because uh, it's a community of climbers who are really into progressing and training and. It's just a community forum on there where people can answer questions. Us as staff from Lattice will go on there. Uh, loads of other climbers who are interested yeah. in it will go on there and answer your questions. Yeah. Uh, and I will try, when you post this video up, I'll try and help out with your comments section. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you get involved in the comments, stuff, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. Yeah. Um, just 
Make sure you remind me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah we will. Yeah, we will. Um, yeah, so make sure you drop us a comment. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Yeah. Follow Lattice. They're always doing super interesting training related stuff on their Instagram. So definitely check them out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and a couple weeks time we're also gonna be doing a quick Q and A as well. So. Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned. Awesome. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.